All right, guys, welcome to a, another beer review. Going over to America this time, to the Latitude 42 Brewing Company. And this is a can, a nice tall boy can, of the Cosmic Charles's Pale Ale. Craft brewed and canned by Latitude 42 Brewing Company. Uh, where are these guys based out of? Um, I actually have no idea because there's very little information uh, can't even find an ABV for this beer and there's no like import information which I find very odd so I'm not sure if this is a, a legitimate uh, release here in Germany just to make sure I'm not going to say where I picked it up because I don't want to get anyone into potential trouble um, but yeah oh there we go it says it right in the corner it is small so you have to look for it so this is a pint can 4.8% alcohol by volume, and uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful artwork on this one. Sort of reminds me of Funkadelic, and uh, the artwork comes courtesy of Reverend Joshua Garrix. So um, yeah, I'll put that information down below, but yeah, look at that. That's a very, very snazzy can, if I ever saw one. And it's a pint can as well. So uh, yeah, a relatively light pale ale. Doesn't really have uh, any best before dates on it. I mean, it's got a little code there, but I wouldn't be able to decipher it, so I'm not sure exactly how fresh it is. So, uh, yeah, I could say where I got it from now, can't I? Pick this up from Beretta, and I've seen it a, a few times since the Craft Beer Festival, so this isn't really going to be the freshest, I don't think, but um, I was drawn to the can, I won't lie. So, I was about to get my bottle open then. So, uh, yeah, let's get this can opened and see what we got. What a satisfying sound that is, using my Craft Beer Festival Teku. So I'm not sure if this was available at the uh, Craft Beer Festival because they had a few American breweries like Sassatuck or Sagatuck, the guys who do the Blueberry Maple Imperial Stout. Oh, beautiful beer. Uh, the I think the company's called Dera who does the imports of the American beers. They do like um, Smutty Nose. They bring Smutty Nose over to Germany. Um, Great Divide. I love the fact that we've got Great Divide here in Germany. So I'd imagine this is one of those breweries. And um, just holding the beer here, I'm getting big wafts of hops in there. So beer in the glass then, and that's got a lovely little haze to it. Sort of like a... It's got like hints of gold in there, but it is like that typical amber, orangey pale ale. Uh, it is a little bit light in colour. The light shining through it just illuminates the beer really, really nicely. But yeah, almost in some respects looks like a hoppy lager when you hold it up to the light. Uh, not really too much going on in terms of carbonation, but the beer poured about one finger's worth of a nice white frothy head. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's have a proper sniff of this one. It's got like this almost like savoury, sweet, resiny hop character. That sort of like fried onion. Um, words of escape. I've had a couple of beers tonight. Um, fried onion, like a, a baked garlic clove where it's all squidgy and stuff. That being said, though, there's this like a slight. Like um, when you've been stewing down cabbage, that sort of smell. Which actually, the more you smell it, does become a slight um, unpleasant. But nothing too distracting. But yeah, citrusy hops coming through. It's got just like that very genuine, general dankness to it. A little bit musky as well. And that, that aroma is starting to die down now, thankfully. But yeah, I'm getting, I'd imagine there's something like Cascade and Citra in this beer. It doesn't actually give you um, what exactly the hops are. But it's got a little bit of a spiel on there. So we travelled the galaxy with our buddy Cosmic Charlie in search of the freshest Cascade and Centennial hops for this uh cosmic pale ale 
dry hopped to perfection to accentuate the piney citrus flavors and aromas to balance out the dry malty finish oh what a living what a long strange trip is it has been sorry english um seems to have completely gone out the window so uh yeah i've never read that by the way and i kind of got it right on the aroma probably should have waited till i taste it first but i didn't realize they'd uh give you the like taster notes uh but yeah of cascade you're getting that in abundance with this beer and then it's signed by i'm not too sure who that is um I've heard of this brewery uh, before, but I've never really, I won't be able to tell you any of their beers. Um, I've just seen like, some of my American beer tubers talking about this brewery. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to give it a try. Because, you know, when you see a brewery that you've not really heard of, or you're not too familiar with, and, you know, pint can, I think it was about five euros, something like that. You know, you're paying that for like 330 mils of some German brewed pale ales, so... Yeah, it might not be the freshest, but as a reviewer and a person who likes to try new things uh, in the world of beer, that was, you know, it was a no-brainer. And I'm sure, you know, in the UK you could probably get that cheaper. I know for damn sure it's going to be cheaper in the US, but um, yeah, it's, it's, with a can like that and the whole concept of it, yeah, why not give it a go? Anyway, smells good. Um, yeah, that off flavour's gone now, that it's uh, sort of breathed in the glass. Thank God, because that was, it could have got a little bit too harsh, actually, um, if that was to build up any. Um, but yeah, this sounds good, looks good, smells good. Let's hope it tastes good. Cheers, guys. That's all about that citrus character. In like the general broadest sense. You get like the usual suspects of grapefruit, blood orange, uh, normal oranges, uh, lemons, limes, even maybe a hint of like that lemongrass sort of character coming through. It's got that sort of like herbal vegetation sort of flavour to it. Thankfully not cabbagey like I got on the aroma a while ago. It's very zingy on the mouthfeel. This is going to sound so ridiculous, but it's it feels like lemon, like a lemon drink, almost. It's not really puckering or drying or anything like that, but it's like dancing on your tongue, and that carbonation with that somewhat light and crisp body. Yeah, it's, it's lovely, but it leaves it a little bit oily at the same time, <laughs> because you're getting those resinous characters coming through. But it's more like offsetting the other flavours as opposed to being a domineering factor. But um, yeah, it's so drinkable at 4.3%. This is such an easy drinking pale ale. It's like one of those ones, and I used this term in a review that I did earlier tonight for an IPA that I had. It's a beer you've tasted before. It's very familiar. But this also has little bits of character and personality that you might not really see in some other pale ales, or you will see in other pale ales. Like little subtle spicy notes are coming out in this one. And that's like herbal flavour, but it's not getting medicinal, which is nice. It does have that slight vitamin, like orange vitamin tablet sort of flavour, which actually works within the, the, the beer itself. But yeah, it's got a lovely light body, but it's not watery. So satisfying to drink. It's refreshing. It's first quenching. Perfect beer for the summer. And you know, at four point hang on. Du, 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 du. At four point eight, it's a nice session beer. It's a nice beer for when you're in the garden and you've come back in and you want not just like a, a typical garden beer like a and an adjunct lager or so, which are fantastic for that sort of thing, but for a little bit of flavour, a little bit of character, that citrusy character adds a sense of refreshment to the beer as well. Slight tartness, um, ever so faint gooseberry 
like tartness in there, or maybe even like a hint of passion fruit, maybe. But it's not like overtly tropical, it's more just like a citrus bomb, in my opinion, which is a nice change. Um, I've not had a pale ale like this for a while, and this is a, a really nice example. I thought I was going to be slightly disappointed because of the fact that I have no idea how old this is. I mean, if this was fresh, obviously it would probably be a, a hell of a lot better, but you're not getting any detective fade in there. It's not becoming a malt bomb. Those lovely, crisp, almost pills-like malt characters just help this beer just become so chuggable. And uh, yeah, th these are the beers that I love about American craft brewery. You know, sort of like, to me anyway, off the beaten track sort of thing. You know, I think these might be a really big player in the, the world of craft beer in America. But I've not seen really any of these beers around, either in the UK or in Germany. Of course, some people will have seen them. And some people probably experienced a hell of a lot of them. But yeah, this is just a... Very solidly accomplished brew indeed, it just really is. It's not going to blow your socks off. It's not going to make you reevaluate the world of beer. But if you want a very solid beer that you can pick apart, and you can uh, dwell on, you can think about this it. But at the same time, if you just want a lovely, citrusy, light, refreshing, slightly zingy, tart beer, then I... You could do much worse than this and you know it's a pint can which you very rarely see and for the price yeah it's a little bit expensive but like i was saying you get 300 ml bottles of german brewed pale ales which are let's face it a lot of them are left to be desired because they're just a little bit too thin a little bit too like dishwaters and sort of soap but that that's a i'd say it's worth the money would i buy it again anytime soon um i don't know um, don't think so, but if I was in America and I saw the brewery and I went to the tap house and I wanted the beer that I knew was going to be a good one, then hell yeah, I'd pick this one up again. So uh, if you do see it, give it a go. Um, and if you have tried it, as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments box. And if you tried anything else from Latitude, uh, then of course, those recommendations and opinions are also very much welcomed. So I apologise about that little shaky start about not really knowing the legitimacy of uh, the beer, uh, to be honest. But um, yeah, that's a really, it's a damn good beer. So I'm going to give that a very solid. Just seems right to give it a 9 out of 10. Um, it's doing the trick, it's going down well. And it's one of those beers that it's perfect to have maybe when you're two or three beers into a little bit of a session which is kind of what I'm doing right now although uh, I have been cleansing my palate so um, flavours wouldn't get too mixed but uh, yeah this is going to go with all sorts of cuisine it's you know it, it's just one of those beers spicy food salads burgers pulled pork barbecue bar food specifically perfect bar beer you know it's a very versatile beer indeed and uh, yeah, 9 out of 10. Highly, highly recommended from the Clueless Drinker. So check out Latitude down below, or Latitude 42, I should say. Check out Beretta. Check out my American craft beer playlist, as well as my pale ale playlist for examples of the style. Thank you for watching. I know it's been another long one, but I apologise about that. But I do appreciate everyone who sticks with me when I'm... Uh, doing these longer reviews which seems to be a lot of the time now but uh, I think people would rather have this than me just like cutting away every like 30 seconds or so but um yeah I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this beer it's probably gonna go way too quickly and uh, yeah thank you all for watching and I shall hopefully see you on the other side I don't know why I said that